Welcome to the channel. In this video, we'll be looking at the most disturbing things captured in Walmart. This robber took a page out of Mission Impossible as he used a rope to go down the skylight before taking some jewelry. However, this ain't the movies. Listen to how he messed up. He ended up breaking the seal on one of the skylights um, and also the security mesh, and they rappelled down into the building. The man would flee the scene dumping the bag of stolen goods for a faster getaway. The man was never caught. I'm sure we've all seen our fair share of car crashes, but have you ever seen anything like this? Look at how this car is on this pole and stays there. The driver that caused this is okay, but how do you think that happened? Let me know. This crazy footage shows a black sedan being chased by police into a Walmart. The suspect got out as the car was still running, stunning bystanders. The cops closed off the Walmart quickly as a crime scene and police formed a perimeter around the store. Later, police can be seen detaining a man in different clothing. Did he have time to change? The suspect's crime is also unknown. In this video, you can first see two people walking along the sidewalk with some baggage at hand, along with the man being armed. They are walking at a high speed and that is for a sinister reason. They were walking from a restaurant where they had wounded two cops before walking towards this Walmart. The two horrible people in question are Jared and Amanda Miller, and sadly they were just getting started with those officers. Jared believed he was a hotshot and made it known by shouting it in the store, but no one took him seriously whatsoever. Jared then fired off a round horrifying the customers in the store. One brave customer tried to flank Jared but was unaware Amanda was in cahoots with him. She would turn around and take the man's life. We can't show that but we can show his admirable attempts to keep everyone safe. People in the store can be seen fleeing or hiding to avoid any potential harm. A police officer then emerged to try and de-escalate the situation. Jared shattered the glass of the ammunition cabinet. He then grabbed the ammo to unleash more chaos into the store. We cannot show the carnage, but we can inform you the police emerged victorious after 24 minutes of mayhem. Jared was arrested. Amanda didn't make it. What a horrible situation. Condolences to the victims and anyone affected. CCTV footage captures Donald Smith approach his victims and he was able to convince them to tag along in this Walmart. He promised the struggling family some new outfits and some McDonald's afterwards. Donald is the blue arrow standing around watching the family pick out some shoes. Donald at first seems like a harmless and genuine elderly man. However, the family did not realize they were shopping with a monster. Instead of going to McDonald's as promised, Donald and his victims left the mall entirely. This would be the last time the girl would be seen alive. They drove off while the mother was still in the store thinking they got McDonald's. Donald was caught and is on trial. What a sad, sad situation. Just goes to show strangers can never be trusted, even the elderly. Mass shootings have been an epidemic in the states, so it should be no surprise the police took the report of a stolen shotgun at Walmart very seriously. 
if uh, if I can come back, I will. Okay. Just please call. Get help. Don't go back. Miami Metro responding to Walmart. Radio reports by mail. Beach it in front, beach it in front. Stop. The officers rushed into the store quickly, one officer flanking the other. Be wary. It could be bad intel too, right? So. Sadly, the suspect was gone. However, the officers gathered and thought of the best way to catch the suspect. Um, and last name right, description, clear. Sarge? So last description I have in many different years is like blue jogger type pants, black sweatshirt, 5'9"-ish tan male with a short beard and short hair. They got a description of the man before they would head off into the woods. They got their weapons ready along with guard dogs for the search before they stumbled upon a campsite. Police Department, come out of the tent. Bellingham Police Department, step out of the tent. Police Department, if you're inside, say something. Hey, who's inside? Me. Who's me? Stephen what? Seaton. Oh, Seaton. You mind coming out of the tent and talking with us real quick? Why? We're looking for someone. We're going to make sure you're not him. Definitely not. Well, that would make it things a lot easier for us so we can get the hell out of your bubble. You mind stepping out real quick? Oh, man, yeah. Thanks, brother. Appreciate it. Oh, you're you're Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Anybody else in with, with you? What? No. Okay. You see anybody run through here? Oh, What's the guy's name? Okay. No, the other guy. Uh, Jimmy. Hey, do you know a Jimmy that comes down here? A guy named Jimmy? No. Huh? No. Okay, it's supposed to be some dude running here running around with a shotgun that just broke into Walmart with it. So. Oh shit. So you don't know it? You don't know a Jimmy? No. Just give me a heads up. That's why you got all these police officers out here bothering the shit out of you. You feel right, me? Man. We're just trying to make sure the community stays safe, right? Yeah. All right, cool, brother. Appreciate Thank you. you. Yeah, man. All right. Okay. Push. Uh-uh. Not in this trail. Was that uh, the movie Hangover? Bangkok has him now. Yeah, yeah, we... They soon realized the occupant did not match the description. The officers soon stumbled upon another campsite. However, they want to make sure that none of the occupants are the Jimmy guy they've been looking for, and they ask the occupants about him in hopes for info. After that, okay, we're, we're looking for a guy armed with a shotgun and was possibly going to shoot some people at Walmart. So that's why you have all these cops out here right now. Okay. All right, so you guys see anybody that matches that description? You guys got phones on you? Yeah. Yeah, if you guys can, call 911, okay? Do you mind if I show you a picture of what I'm looking at? Yeah. Yeah, no. I don't know that right. if, if we see him, we'll let, we'll okay. let you know. Um, so, armed with a shotgun, another gun. Went into Walmart, we got dispatched as a possible active shooter at Walmart. I think somebody's gonna go and start shooting the place up. The guy bashed a bunch of counters, took some ammo. Sounds like he's got beef for somebody out here in the woods. They made their way to another campsite where a man and his girlfriend were staying. The woman stated there were sketchy people hanging out north of where they were. I've never seen that man before. Never? Uh-uh. There's been a lot of like sketchy people hanging out at the front that I don't recognize. Yeah, in the front? Yeah, yeah like, like, like the, the Walmart entrance. The store was taped up and you can hear a description of Jimmy's actions. That's part of the shotgun. Okay. Um, because he tries to bust into one of the other cabinets. We don't have no ammo with the butt of the gun. Is there a CSI call out? No. We don't need a call out for this. There's a photo of the gun now. The officer picked up some evidence that seemed to be a part of a gun. I've already got all the photos. Okay, perfect. I think I'm going to take a photo of it and step right away. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think it's like the same as this one? Yeah, it's identical to that one. So, 248. The suspect is in custody and in a cop car. He was silent. So, Bellingham, please, just so you know, you're being audio and video recorded. Right? What was your name? I'm Officer James. What's your name? Okay, we're not talking. 
Jimmy was transported and can be seen being booked and identified through his tattoos. Kudos to the officers for catching this evil creep. Here's a marker. We think it's Jimmy Brashears. I haven't ever met him. Um, and he has a bunch of warrants and stuff that they're looking at confirming. So I don't know if you have his tattoos in there. It's Jimmy Brashears. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Well, our dispatch. We'll let this dispatch know as a confirmation. Joel Guy Jr. can be seen entering this Walmart. He can be seen on camera with a unique set of purchases. The items consisted of food grade hydrogen peroxide, muriatic acid, bleach sprayer, extension cords, a knife, a timer, and more. To evade suspicion, he bought these at separate stores such as Home Depot and Academy Sports. In this footage is Joel's mother. Soon after this, she would be ended by her own son. All of his purchases were meant to hide the evidence of his wrongdoing by making the body disappear. To make things worse, as if that were possible, it wasn't just her, but also her husband. The reasoning for this crime is because his parents were retiring and wouldn't be able to provide as much financial support. Joel was also meant to receive a $500,000 life insurance policy in the event of his parents' sudden passing. A note in his backpack showed how much he planned it out and to get the insurance policy. What a monster to do that to his mother for money. Disgusting. While cosplaying is all about having fun and being creative, dressing up like a clown and chasing individuals in a parking lot enters the eerie zone. Coweta County Police got complaints of a guy costumed as a clown pursuing people around the parking lot of a Walmart store. When the police came to investigate, they found a guy costumed in a checkered clown costume with makeup and a mask. He said he was doing it in the spirit of Halloween, which was just around the corner and that people had been approaching him to snap photographs with him. Eyewitnesses on the site provided a different reason, claiming that Barry Allen Byram had been pursuing them and scaring them. The cops detained Byram for disorderly behavior because the lady was so terrified she couldn't get out of her vehicle. Byram assured the police that scaring people was not a crime. It is unknown what went through Byron's mind before doing such a thing, but let's hope none of us ever meet a creepy clown in a parking lot. When theft isn't enough, people get innovative and discover ways to get one over on the loss prevention crowd. The perpetrators ran an elaborate ring throughout Northeast Florida, purchasing TVs, selling them to a third party, and placing a different TV in the box to return it for a full refund. Well, Tom, investigators say those men would walk into Walmart stores like this one and pull a switcheroo, and they always did it with large flat screen TVs. Now, this is surveillance video of the men walking out of Walmart with those large TVs. It appears that the store was not verifying the TV or serial numbers, and the thieves were able to swap out duplicate TVs for an extended period before being apprehended. Some speculate that this may have been an inside job. Serial numbers on electronics are usually checked to guarantee that they are returning the same item. The question is, was this always the case everywhere, or was this an excellent excuse to examine some rules? This video shows a man in a disturbed state pulling food items off the shelves at Walmart, throwing them on the floor, and taking bites out of them. He also pours a yogurt drink on his head and crushes raw eggs into his mouth, while the customers and staff stand and watch, uncertain of his state of mind or whether he would become violent. It later emerged that the man was under the influence of an illegal drug, which explained his strange and erratic behavior. The incident appears to have been a case of drug-induced self-harm rather than any deliberate criminal intent. Paul Miller was shopping at Walmart when he noticed someone pouring what appeared to be lighter fluid on the Halloween clothes display. He initially thought it might be a Halloween prank, but within seconds smoke rose and the display caught fire. My initial thought was maybe it's just a Halloween trick, they're just trying to, you know, surprise people. Within a split second is when I saw, I saw the flames. He alerted the employees who quickly arrived with fire extinguishers and put out the fire. 
Although the fire did not spread, they had to ensure that it hadn't reached anything more hazardous, and they had to remove the smoking Halloween candy. The perpetrator was arrested, but the motive for setting fire to the Halloween costumes remained unknown. One shopper's trip to Walmart turned sour when the store went into lockdown. Yes, you heard that correctly, most of us had no idea Walmart had a lockdown policy until one customer was able to catch the whole ordeal on tape. An armed individual had allegedly entered the shop and was prowling the aisles. The doors were secured in accordance with the lockdown routine, preventing anybody else from entering the workplace and putting themselves in risk. Customers and personnel were told to remain where they were and squat or lie down on the floors. The event terrified everybody involved, and you can see in the video how afraid everyone is when the shopper's son instructs them to stop recording for fear of getting found. Eventually, an officer arrives and informs everyone that they are free to leave the premises. Further proof, Walmart employees don't get paid enough. A young man entered the store, picked up a machete and a hammer, and began to wave the machete around while screaming and fighting with nothing. The video of the incident shows him completely out of control, spouting gibberish and waving the machete around. The police were called and negotiations with the man went on for around two hours, during which he continued to scream and wave the machete. Finally, the man surrendered peacefully and the police escorted him out of the building. You expect to see vehicles doing somersaults and landing right side up on highways in highly dangerous vehicle collisions. The open road provides many temptations and drivers often forget themselves and push up the throttle to exceed the speed limit, resulting in some of the most lethal types of accidents you'll ever witness. But what if you encounter a similar deadly mishap with a vehicle flipped right side up within a Walmart parking lot? Take a hard look at that vehicle. How do you think that happened? Let me know. Determining whether a threat is genuine or not can be challenging, but in this case, a woman's threat was taken seriously. The woman had a history of erratic behavior and had made verbal threats of violence in public, including a threat to blow up a store if she was not given money. Fortunately, an off-duty fish and wildlife conservation officer wearing a body camera approached her, escorted her and her son out of the store, and took her threat seriously. Ma'am, officer, I was for the fish and wildlife. Do you mind stepping out front with me? The woman had a history of using amphetamines, which can cause hallucinations that likely fueled her many threats. Go ahead and put your phone down, your purse down, the lighter. Yes. Go ahead and put it down right now. So the reason you're in handcuffs right now is for the mason jar filled with nails and kerosene that you constructed. If there was something like that, it wasn't mine. Okay, well they have video of you putting that together. <laughs> it wasn't me. When she was taken into custody, her cart was found to contain questionable materials, leading authorities to believe that her threats may not have been genuine. This incident highlights the challenge of distinguishing between real and imagined threats, particularly when they may be influenced by mental health or substance use issues. Well, I swear if you break my window or dent my truck, then you're going to have additional charges. You realize you just kicked the door into my wrist, right? This footage shows a woman attempting to leave the store with a stolen TV. Take a look. In spite the beepers blaring and many failed attempts, no employees can be found. Maybe she should bring a partner next time for assistance. In an unexpected turn of events, roughly 200 individuals attacked and plundered a Walmart after it had closed for the night. Investigators state a crowd of around 200 people broke the front door of a Walmart on Fletcher Avenue, stealing more than $100,000 in goods. In the video, an inflow of people develop outside the locked store and break down the glass that houses the entrance. The crowd rushes inside, most of the thieves go to the back of the store to the electronics region and begin stealing some of the costliest goods in the store. We think at least 200 people stormed in the Walmart and most of them went straight to the electronics section, so the costliest things in the store were what they were after. 
We believe at least 200 storm into the Walmart and the majority of them headed straight to the electronic section. So the most expensive items in the store is what they were after. This video shows a thief stealing from Walmart, breathing heavily as he dashes out the door with desperation written all over his face. He runs into a chaotic parking lot where many cars are pulling away from the scene as a result of an earlier gunshot. The thief attempts to carjack the first man he sees, but his first attempt fails. He then tries a second time and comes close to succeeding, but the car owner fights back and refuses to give up his vehicle. The thief runs off on foot, realizing that the longer he struggles, the greater the risk of being caught. The world of tiny video cameras can be alarming, as it allows perverts to secretly capture high-definition footage or images of individuals in private moments. Recently, a hidden camera was discovered in a Walmart store's bathroom, raising concerns about who may be monitoring people in their most vulnerable moments. It's absolutely terrible, and there are monsters out here that will uh, prey on all the unsuspecting. This discovery has left residents feeling unsettled, scared, and disturbed. Investigations are ongoing to determine who planted the camera and how many other places might have similar devices. Everywhere, not just this place, but everywhere. You have to be conscious of your surroundings. We live in a uh, media technology age. The incident raises the question of whether there are other hidden cameras in other private places and how people are being monitored without their knowledge. This situation with your local Walmart is not ideal as this Walmart suddenly exploded. As the first responders arrived at the scene, they were confronted with a frightening and intense situation on the ground as they battled the fire. While engaged in the firefighting efforts and pouring hundreds of gallons of water onto the flames, they reached a critical point midway through when they realized that they could not maintain such high levels of water supply for much longer. There is a water issue. Uh, we've been pumping a lot of water for three hours now, or, or I don't even know what time it is, <laughs> but we've been using a lot of water and we can't sustain that long term. The situation became even more perilous and alarming for the first responders as the fire mixed with explosions, intensifying the danger they faced. The flames, coupled with the risk of spreading beyond the confines of the super center, created a heightened sense of fear among the responders. At times, it's not just humans that pose a concern, but also wildlife. In a Walmart located in North Texas, an unexpected visitor made an entrance. Although there is no video footage, the news anchor presents pictures that would shock any customer. The surprise, however, was encountered by an employee who was collecting carts late in the evening. Fortunately, they managed to safely remove the snake. Imagine going to the grocery store, reaching for a cart, and being startled by an unwelcome legless guest. How did this snake end up there? Was it simply seeking a comfortable place to rest, or was it a result of a misguided attempt to abandon a pet? In this video is a case of perhaps racial profiling. That was like 10, 15 years ago. What are you talking about? He makes several accusatory statements, including disability. Where are you taking me? Why are you pulling me? You don't have to pull me. You know I'm disabled, right? I have back issues. You don't have to pull me, sir. The situation involves accusations of racial profiling and other words that are intended to support the man's innocence. In the video, the woman behind the camera directs harsh criticisms towards the police officer and confidently asserts that the man being escorted away is innocent. However, it raises the question of whether his innocence is truly a certainty. By observing the video attentively, one will uncover the startling reason why the man is being led away in handcuffs. Despite his protests of innocence, rest assured, the reason has nothing to do with race. So the reason why he's going to jail tonight is because he's been warned in the past. It, there's no time limit on it. You're taking I'm going to, to jail? Yes, it's called trespass after one week. The unsettling reality of mass shootings in the United States has left the entire nation on edge, always on high alert whenever firearms are mentioned. The mere mention of a gun can send shivers down your spine as evidenced by the alarming frequency of these incidents. When the urgent 911 call reports an individual brandishing a firearm in a crowded store, like the Beaver Creek Walmart, the adrenaline rushes through your veins, and you can't help but visualize the potential devastation that a single person could afflict upon others. Death arrives in the wrong box, and the weight of the situation tightens its grip, leaving everyone in a state of heightened anxiety and concern. Listen as the caller describes the suspect. He's a black male, probably about six foot tall. Okay, what's he wearing? Um, blue shirt, blue pants. 
Where is he at now? He's over in the pack. The offensive synchronization of descriptions evokes a strong sense of imminent danger within the mall. This particular 911 call is intriguing due to the certainty and precision of the caller's words, painting a vivid picture of the situation. The inclusion of additional details only adds to the alarming nature of the scenario. He's like loading it right now. In times of turmoil like these, we desperately cling to hope, praying for swift police intervention and the preservation of innocent lives. We yearn for a moment when the universe shields the vulnerable, as time becomes an urgent factor and our hearts can no longer endure the rapid beats and the creeping fear that seizes us collectively. With bated breath, we listen to the phone call, anxiously awaiting the operator's question to the colleague, what is he doing right now? What's he doing now? He looks like he's just trying to load it. He's just trying to load it? Yeah. Confirmed. A sense of relief washes over us as Ronald Ritchie, identified as the colleague, responds promptly. The extent of the danger is undeniably real, as vivid as anyone can imagine. The college student solidifies this fear, leaving no room for doubt when he explicitly responds to a question about the potential actions of the shooter. Okay, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Where is he at now? There. He's still in the pet section, just looks like, I don't know what he's trying to do. He's just like pointing at 40, 40, 40, 40. 20, 23. This is warrant. I'm still on the line. You guys need any help? Affirmative 90, he's in the pet section. Fever Creek, yes, it's Fairmore. Do you guys need any help that way? Not yet. Okay, thank I'm you. Stay on the line. I let my sergeant know just in case. Thank you. You're welcome. Another operator takes over the call, ensuring continuous communication with the caller and receiving updates on the evolving situation. With urgency, she promptly inquires about the actions of the possible shooter and relays that crucial information to the dispatch, who are already on their way to the specified location. At this point, the nature of the weapon held by the potential shooter remains unknown. The only information we have is that the operator quickly posed the crucial question, revealing that we are potentially dealing with an individual wielding a rifle. Sir, what type of gun is it? Is it a shotgun or is it a handgun? It looks like a rifle. What color is the it? Black. The black white rifle? Yeah. All right, you said you saw him put loaded? He looked like he was trying to load it, I don't know. The police are immediately informed of the discovery, accompanied by a detailed description of the individual who appears to be a significant threat. He's a black male, what's he wearing? Uh, black shirt and blue jeans. He's a black male, black shirt and blue jeans? Yeah. Does he have a hat or anything on? No, he's got like an afro. An afro? Pay close attention as the colleague vividly describes the current state of affairs. As the events unfold, a thought starts to form in your mind, questioning whether the caller might be misreporting or lacking accurate information. Suddenly, without warning, the police storm in and the possible shooter is swiftly shot down by law enforcement. However, this critical part of the video cannot be shared. It is at this juncture that the entire plot unravels, revealing that the black man was merely holding a Crossman MK-177 BB pellet rifle, which he had discovered unpackaged on a store shelf. All he had done was admire a harmless toy, yet tragically, death came knocking. Very unfortunate situation. In December 2016, a horrific crime unfolded involving a man named Markeith Lloyd. During a heated argument, Markeith pulled out a gun and fatally shot his pregnant ex-girlfriend. The dispute reportedly centered around the decision of whether to keep or report the baby. Following the incident, Orlando police launched a manhunt to apprehend Markeith, but initial efforts proved fruitless as he remained at large. However, on an ill-fated day, January 9th, a significant development occurred. Lieutenant Derek Clayton coincidentally found herself shopping at the same Walmart as the fugitive Markeith. Both individuals entered the Walmart on Princeton Avenue, albeit 15 minutes apart, with Markeith entering first followed by Deborah's arrival minutes later. Initially, their paths do not intersect as they navigate through the store. They independently move around one another, collecting the supplies they each needed without crossing paths or interacting with one another. Lieutenant Clayton swiftly completes her shopping and proceeds to the checkout counter. Similarly, Lloyd also heads to a different counter to complete his purchase. Once again, their paths avoid intersecting as they go about their separate transactions. Observe the arrival of police officers at the checkout counter. At the checkout counter, Lloyd is also present. This is the only instance where their paths briefly cross. Just as Lieutenant Clayton completes her payment and begins heading out of the store with her purchases, Lloyd is making his own payments, with his back turned towards her. 
Unaware of the dangerous presence in the store, the lieutenant does not see him. Shortly after both Markeith and Lieutenant Deborah Clayton leave the Walmart, a tragic turn of events occurs. Markeith shoots Lieutenant Clayton, inflicting a fatal injury. Subsequently, law enforcement initiates another intense manhunt, but Markeith proves adept at hiding and manages to evade capture for an additional eight days before finally being apprehended. As a consequence of his heinous actions, Markeith was sentenced to the death penalty. The presence of large fires is undeniably frightening, but small fires inside a store can also be deeply unsettling. What makes this situation particularly alarming is the apparent lack of evacuation or immediate response. For an extended period of time, it seems that no action is being taken to address the fire, allowing it to continue unabated and pose a significant risk. The lack of intervention and urgency is concerning as the fire continues to rage on without any visible efforts to contain or extinguish it. The absence of a visible source for the flames adds to the unsettling nature of the situation. It gives the impression that the shelves or items within the store have inexplicably caught fire without any apparent cause. This occurrence happening in the middle of a weekday, when the store is likely occupied by customers and employees, adds to the sense of urgency and concern. The lack of immediate action or response to address the fire only heightens the unease as the flames continue to burn unchecked. After almost a minute of filming, during which the fire continues to grow, signs and displays within the store begin to collapse. It is at this point that an employee finally emerges from the back area, presumably alerted to the situation. The delayed response adds to the sense of unease as it raises questions about the store's preparedness and emergency protocols. The employee's appearance signals that action is being taken, but the initial moments of inaction and the escalating chaos create a tense and unsettling atmosphere. Just in the nick of time, the employee arrives as the fire continues to grow, possibly reaching a point where it could become uncontrollable. The cameramen capture the unfolding situation, including the charred remnants of the wall and the end cap that was affected by the flames. The footage highlights the seriousness of the situation and the potential danger posed by the fire. On February 10th, 2020, six-year-old Faye Swedlick returned home from school in the afternoon. The weather was lovely and her mother, Selena Collins, allowed her to play outside under the sun. Tragically, this decision would have devastating consequences as Faye went missing and could not be located just an hour later. This led to a search for answers and Cody Taylor emerged as the prime suspect believed to have abducted and ultimately taken the life of the young girl. The details surrounding what happened to Faye at the hands of Cody Taylor are deeply unsettling and continue to haunt the community. Upon receiving the report of Faye's disappearance, a search of the neighborhood was promptly initiated by the police. Not only were outdoor areas searched, but the homes of neighbors, including Cody Taylor's residence, were also investigated. Cody Taylor emerged as the primary suspect in Faye's disappearance. In a video clip, Taylor is seen walking towards a local Walmart store where he made purchases. Interestingly, his roommate mentions that he had recently used a deodorizing spray in their house. Pay close attention to the top right hand corner of the screen to spot Taylor in the footage. By the time Cody Taylor was walking to Walmart, he had already committed the heinous act of murdering Faye and left her lifeless body inside a laundry bag at his home. During this time, the police conducted a search of his apartment with the consent of his roommate, but found nothing suspicious. Remarkably, they even noticed the presence of the laundry bag, but did not perceive it as significant. The search for Faye continued for three days without any significant leads, and the police repeatedly visited Taylor's home to question him, potentially unnerving him. As a result, he decided to bury Faye's body in the nearby woods. The presence of light captured in the woods on the night Taylor buried her is believed to be connected to his purchase of soil from Walmart.
you can once again see Taylor in the woods following his Walmart trip. Director Snell Grove made a chilling discovery when he found Faye's lifeless body in the same area of the woods where Taylor had been observed spending time both at night and the following morning after his trip to Walmart. This grim revelation solidified the connection between Taylor's activities and Faye's tragic fate. The motive behind this horrific act is unknown. Before police could question him, Taylor took his own life. What a coward. Shooting incidents frequently occur with rapid and unpredictable escalation, often leaving law enforcement with limited opportunity to intervene. However, in this particular case, the police received advance warning and swiftly responded by rushing to a Walmart store in Tennessee. The prompt action aimed to mitigate the unfolding mayhem and protect the safety of those present. On December 23rd, 2020, with the scent of Christmas and the anticipation of snow in the air, the officers were acutely vigilant as they received the call. Upon arriving at the Walmart store, they wasted no time and immediately immersed themselves in the unfolding situation, prioritizing the safety of those inside. The urgency of the matter was heightened by an employee's report that the potential shooter had moved to the back area prompting the officers to adopt a direct approach. Clothing description, black male, white shirt, khaki pants. 300, do you copy? Benedict will be holding the grocery side inside. Tinker is holding outside. County is holding general merchandise. Units are gonna start clearing the building. All right, on me, you stay. That's why I know how to do it. That's why I know how to do this, boys. Let's start on this side. Okay. You on the right. I'm on the left. You start getting the hallways. I'm going to go around and just start trying to get down, all right? We going straight down this alley here? Straight down. The only other way I know how to do it. Oh, what do you got? Go from outside in. Outside, you can see all the way down Let's and do it. around. We need to clear this. Uh, open door. Hold. Please follow me. In a brief discussion, the officers strategize their next steps before swiftly taking action to secure the premises and protect the individuals present. Young ones and store owners were escorted out of the Walmart. Come on. Hey, we're here. Come on. These are police officers. Okay. Good job. Good job, guys. All right. Some youngsters were hiding, and their fear was sad to see. Police department. You're good. You're good. Come on. Come on, what is this thing doing? <laughs> 13, do I have anybody on the grocery side outside? I can send the civilians to. I just leave them here for right now. We got five. Coming your way. Just come out here for a second. I'm going to escort y'all out. Huh? Can it wait? Yeah. I mean, as long as somebody don't get on that. Yeah, we'll, we'll get it. We'll get you guys. I'll walk that back up. Follow me. We got one of the suspects on the outdoor living side. We have one in custody as of right now. Stand four. Brian, when you get the civilians cleared out, Robbie, uh, detail somebody to get that suspect. Stand four. 
Unfortunately, the best news of all is that no shots were fired by either the police or the reported shooter, who was not present at the scene. However, in these moments, tensions naturally run high, as is often the case in such situations. Get down, 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 get down,
Speculation regarding the possible reasons behind his actions remains open-ended. It is indeed unsettling to contemplate the fragility of the human mind and the potential for individuals to reach a breaking point. The incident serves as a stark reminder of the delicate balance that exists within us all, and the potential for sudden and unexpected actions that can have far-reaching consequences. The invasion of privacy and violation experienced when a camera captures someone undressing in a public dressing room can have long-lasting and profound effects. The sense of betrayal, vulnerability, and loss of personal safety can be deeply traumatic, leaving a lasting impact on the individual's well-being and sense of security. It is crucial to address and support victims of such incidents as the consequences can extend far beyond the immediate violation. The woman in question experienced a significant shock and distressing realization when she noticed a camera dome in the ceiling of the Walmart dressing room. When I looked in the reflection of the mirror, I could see a camera hanging from the Walmart ceiling, one of the surveillance globes. After already undressing and trying on a top, the invasion of her privacy and the violation of her personal space likely caused feelings of discomfort, anger, and betrayal. Discovering that her intimate moments were being recorded without her consent can have a profound impact on her sense of security and trust. I was shocked. Um, I've been freaked out ever since. It is deeply concerning that the woman's immediate response to report the camera to the manager did not result in satisfactory resolution. The manager's assurance to remove the camera without addressing the implications of the recorded footage or who might have accessed it is insufficient. It's a horrible feeling. It leaves the woman feeling a sense of ongoing violation and uncertainty about the extent of the breach of her privacy. The woman's concerns about the camera in the dressing room were not immediately addressed by the Walmart manager. Although Walmart later clarified that the dome was empty, the incident had already left a lasting impact on her sense of privacy. The conflicting information added to her disbelief and raised questions about the store's handling of the situation. She took the next step of seeking legal advice regarding the incident. The outcome of her actions and the decision made are unknown, however. But it is hoped that she received more satisfactory answers and resolution through the involvement of a lawyer. When circumstances are already unfavorable, it doesn't take long for them to deteriorate further. The Walmart fire serves as a prime example of this, resembling the previous clip and showcasing the rapid escalation that can occur. It's evident how easily things can veer off course in such situations. Instead of dispersing, the onlookers stand as fascinated spectators, unwilling to miss the unfolding chaos. In a matter of seconds, the initially manageable fire escalates. Spreading rapidly from the top of an aisle, the thickening smoke becomes increasingly problematic posing challenges for the employees tasked with ensuring people's safety. The video abruptly concludes as one employee hurriedly flees, creating a striking contrast with another employee who moves leisurely. Loss prevention officers face significant challenges in their efforts to prevent theft and maintain security within a store. Despite their best efforts, the task of deterring thieves and ensuring a safe environment can sometimes feel insurmountable. This video captures an incident involving a shoplifter and loss prevention officers recorded by a third-party observer who happened to be present. Are you going to go inside with me or do I need to stand here stupid and wait for PD to get here? Unfortunately, due to the limited length of the video, we don't have the complete context of the situation. The employee in the video attempts to persuade the filming party to leave the premises, but they continue to film and refuse to comply with the request. Sir, you're not, you do not have my permission to record me. I need you to leave my store, please. Um, hey, do you care if I record this man having his hands on you? Whether or not the shoplifter actually committed theft, the situation rapidly escalates around them, causing a chaotic atmosphere. Despite the commotion and noise from others involved, the shoplifter remains quiet throughout the clip, adding to the tense atmosphere of the situation. With each passing day, fraudsters are becoming increasingly sophisticated in their tactics. To stay ahead and protect yourself, it's crucial to remain vigilant and alert at all times. Being aware of their gimmicks and constantly staying on your guard will help you navigate through potential fraudulent schemes. The employees at this Oklahoma Walmart were outmatched by a cunning con artist who managed to walk away with an astonishing amount of $75,000 in cash. Despite their best efforts, the con artist scheme proved to be too clever for the employees to detect and prevent. The con artist executed this low-tech crime by disguising himself as an employee of an armored car company working with the store. With a uniform and a gun, he convincingly portrayed himself as someone there to collect the cash deposit for the day. 
Without resorting to threats or violence, he successfully convinced the employees to hand over the money, duping them into thinking he was simply performing his job duties. The employees easily added the $75,000 to the bag he carried, believing he was a legitimate armored car employee. Afterwards, he calmly walked out of the store and got into his own car, which was not an actual armored vehicle. Looked similar to actually a, a white running vest. The employees were unaware of the crime until later when the actual armored truck arrived to pick up the cash. It was then that they realized they had been tricked by the imposter who had posed as an armored car employee. Awkward, huh? The con artist walked out $75,000 richer. Watch as the police officers pull over a black jeep believed to be involved in shoplifting. Initially, it seems like the occupants of the vehicle might have successfully hidden or discarded any stolen items, as they appear confident and unconcerned about potential consequences. There are two women present, one of them dressed in red, appears surprised and apologetic when confronted by the officers. There is a quick exchange of glances between her and her companion as soon as the topic of shoplifting is mentioned. The woman dressed in red appears agitated, which raises the question of whether she is innocent. On the other hand, the demeanor of the other woman seems unusually calm. The situation quickly escalates when the calm woman mentions retrieving something from the car. The officers escort her back to the vehicle and there is a moment where she appears to be searching for something inside. She's slick and executes her plan by starting the car and attempting to flee. The officers try to stop her, but are unsuccessful as she speeds off, colliding with a police car in the process. This initiates a high-speed car chase which ultimately results in her capture. The reason behind why a man would drive a truck into a business establishment can vary, ranging from possible intoxication, anger, or reckless driving. In this case, the truck driver crashed through the glass doors and continued for a few moments before encountering an obstacle that brought the truck to a halt. The police were promptly called to investigate the incident and determine the cause of the crash. Fortunately, there were no customers present in the store during this chaotic event, and it is hoped that insurance will cover the damages caused. The footage captures an initial innocent interaction as the individual enters the store without any apparent issues. His appearance blends in with the other customers, allowing him to go unnoticed. However, his intentions soon take a turn for the worse. In an attempt to avoid detection, he removes his hat and sweater, hoping to remain anonymous and untraceable. The individual enters Walmart with a clear and calculated plan, heading directly to the jewelry counter. His focused and determined behavior indicates prior preparation. When a customer attempts to intervene, sensing something is amiss, the individual forcefully pushes them away, demonstrating a willingness to use violence. The employee, recognizing the threat, retreats to ensure their safety. The individual proceeds to empty the jewelry counter of its contents, put on a mask, and swiftly exit the location. Unfortunately for the individual, the comments on the video suggest that their actions did not yield a successful outcome. Viewers express doubt and criticism, implying that the stolen items from the jewelry counter may not have been as valuable or desirable as the individual had anticipated. Imagine you're shopping at your local Walmart and you see this. According to the store, a deer reportedly entered a Walmart store and, behaving as one would expect in its natural habitat, caused chaos by knocking over items and disrupting the organized arrangement of the store. A female Walmart employee bravely intervened when a deer entered the store, taking swift action to prevent further chaos. With remarkable patience, she carefully followed the deer's movements, ultimately seizing the opportunity to pin it to the ground and ensure it could not cause any more disturbance. Her quick thinking and courageous actions helped maintain order in the store. That deer chose the wrong store. In this video, we can witness a surprising incident where a section of the wall in a relatively new Walmart store collapses, creating a potential safety hazard. It is concerning to see such structural damage in a business establishment, especially one that should prioritize the well-being of its customers and employees. Brand stinking your building. 
freaking cave in almost killing people. I hope nobody got hurt or died because there's a parking spot and this could have happened any shopping hours during any shopping hours. The incident serves as a reminder that even in seemingly well-maintained establishments, unforeseen events can occur, emphasizing the importance of regular inspections and maintenance to ensure the safety of everyone involved. It's a chilling thought to imagine the scenario of someone driving into a parking lot just as the roof starts collapsing with the debris landing on their car windshield. Equally unsettling is the idea of stepping out of your car only to be met with the sudden collapse of the roof. These situations highlight the potential dangers that can arise from structural failures and the importance of maintaining the safety of parking structures, ensuring regular inspections, adherence to safety regulations, and timely maintenance are crucial in preventing such incidents and protecting the well-being of individuals in parking areas. For a new building, this should not have happened. At least there were no serious injuries. In this video, we see about 20 people storm this Walmart, break in, and steal valuables such as electronics and jewelry. They appeared to be working together as they were very well coordinated. Police are on the lookout, but I doubt they'll be caught considering how well covered up they were. Thanks for watching. Stay vigilant, friends.